So let's take a look at how to make a solid fist. First, let's take the hand and bring all of the fingers together. And this row of knuckles, we're going to curl them all in. Once you get to about right here, make sure to tuck the fingernails into the inside of the palm. As it's tucked in, we'll take the thumb now and curl around and taking special note that this part of your thumb will lie behind these row of knuckles. You don't want them to protrude out as this runs the risk of a striking surface jamming the thumb. You don't want it to be out here for the same reason. You don't want to tuck them inside. So this joint is going to be the one at risk of getting jammed. Definitely don't want it like this or like that. Make sure it's nicely tucked behind this row of knuckles. The actual striking surface of the fist is going to be these two big knuckles. Now, when you take a look at the natural alignment of my wrist, you'll notice that there is this bend up here. So we're going to neutralize that line and make it parallel. As I do that, I'm also going to look right here at these two knuckles as the two lines, one line here and here will come into the fist or into the wrist and forearm. Now the forearm has two bones that run along and you want to get these two knuckles to run inside the same line. And you'll also notice that there is a natural cant right here in my wrist as well. So if you can see here, as I make it more exaggerated, you see if they're not in line, now they're in line. So with that alignment, plus the alignment of my wrist, it would make the fist as straight as possible as it is extended outward. All right, it's time to wrap our hands. These hand wraps are about 180 inches and they come with a thumb loop. Some of them don't come with them, but the ones that do come with a thumb loop, when you put them on, you wanna make sure that the hand wrap doesn't start this way. Because if you have your wrap like this and you create your fist, you'll notice that there's this slack point right here, right? It's only tight when you have your hand open. When you create your fist, can you see that? It actually creates a pocket. Now over time, that space will travel around and disintegrate all your hard work in wrapping your hands. So let's make sure that when you put the thumb loop on, it hangs over your arm like that. So let's create the first turns. Here's the first one. And then the second one will overlap the first one. Here's the third and the fourth. Now let's take care of the thumb. We'll go around the thumb and this loop here supports the thumb like this. Now you'll notice that the loop as it travels, look at the inside part of the thumb right here. This X right here is going to keep the thumb supported in this direction. Because when I make a fist and I hit with the surface of uh, this right here, it can help create support keeping the thumb outwards so it doesn't get jammed like that. So I'm going to do it a second time. Now my thumb's supported. Let's go ahead and create the ones for the fingers and for the wrist. I'll come up creating the first side of this X right here. Travel around my knuckles once, twice, three times. It looks like a fourth one here, but what I'm going to do now is create the other side of the X. Here's the first side right here. Here's the second side right there. Now I'm going to go around my wrist, secure that. Now let's take care of the fingers. Going around the finger once to create that X. Coming back. Now this part right here, sometimes you can go ahead and take the time to undo them for aesthetics. Some people really don't care, but for the sake of this video, I'll go ahead and try to straighten it out as best as I can. Next one, in between the index finger and middle finger. And then the index finger and middle finger. Now to dress it up, I'm going to come back up one more time and cover this with one single pass like that. Once I get there, I'll go back down towards my wrist here, wrap around the wrist. Now we're at the Velcro and we're all lined up. Now the way that it should feel, it should be snug, but not so tight it starts cutting off the blood supply in your fingers. 
Should be good to go. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our first two punches, which would be the jab and the cross. Now I'm right-handed, so I have my left foot that's in the front. So my left hand would be the jab. If I was a southpaw where my right foot is in the front and my right hand is in the front like this, this would be my jab. So for all intents and purposes, I'm just gonna use my left hand as my jab. Now, there are three major components when it comes to throwing the jab for coverage. The first one will be right here to cover the jaw to the face. My second one will be the chin being tucked down. And the third one right here is where my hand is talking on the telephone, right? Or I'm bringing a telephone up to my face to talk on it. If I were to face this direction, you'll notice that also that my elbow is down rather than flared up. So if it's a nice vertical line to come in as a shield, I'm protected here. So as I extend my jab, you'll see I'm covered. One, two, three. When I extend my jab, I'm gonna to look to hit with the two big knuckles of my hand or my fist. And at the same time, I'm gonna throw one line out and one line right back in. Rather than one line out and then it drops because now this line is open and runs the risk of me getting attacked. So I wanna go one line out, one line back in. Again, one line out, one line back in. When I extend, make sure you breathe out. Same thing for the cross. It's just on the other side, and I bring it back in. So if I turn this way so you can see, you'll notice that my hand still comes up. Point cover number one, cover number two with my chin, and then my shoulder comes up to my face. Now, for the cross, it comes a little bit awkward sometimes because if you don't turn your body to help the shoulder come up to your face, if I don't rotate, it'll end up looking like I'm bringing my head to my shoulder like this. Now, we don't wanna fight where I'm like constantly trying to move my head this way. I wanna naturally bring my shoulder up. Now, if I'm here, as you can see, my shoulder is not touching my face. All I'm gonna do is on the cross, I'm gonna turn it a little bit more, and you can see that my shoulder is naturally coming up to my face. Another way to think about it is, Imagine you're holding a bottle of water and you're pouring some out. See that? The original way I was taught this, that's the corkscrew punch, like that. But an easier way to think of it is just pouring out some water from the bottle, okay? Now the last piece of the cross is making sure that you're pivoting. So you don't want this foot to be flat. As you can see, it's flat, and it makes it very hard for this hip and my shoulder to rotate over. So if I come up on my toes and then pivot on the ball of my foot and then my knee is now centered in rather than still flared outward like this, I want it to point inward and I can have a nice extended cross. So if I practice straight on, jab, cross, to the side, jab, cross, and the other side this way, jab, cross. Shh, shh. 